Sure. I'm so glad to be here initially and um, at this joint venture of the, the two groups. It really is my pleasure. I've been in Hong Kong for many years, but I travel once in my life uh, speaking, giving workshops. But my background is one of, as a physician. I'm a doctor, a British doctor, and I, um, having been in Hong Kong for such a long time, of course, I've learned to engage with the energies of the East and West, um, East and Western healing modalities, concepts, drugs, herbs, and also I've developed this medical practice, um, holistic medical practice of 14 people in order to help the patients more because although Western medicine is wonderful and I totally agree that, I think there's so many layers one can have on top of it. It's not an either or situation. It's the let's have the best of all world situation. So I've been able to offer that in Hong Kong and develop healing modalities. However, my passion is in um, my body spirit and healing in consciousness. And within this specifically, I'm interested in light. Now to me, light is everything. It's the um, primordial substance from which we arose, it's the ground substance of the universe, it's the energy of love, it's that which connects us in a shimmering way. And it's my passion to explain how this works at a very simple level. I mean, let's start small in the human body before we go out to the cosmos so that people can understand how to use it to improve their lives, how to interpret and interface with these life fields that um, I have no doubt we do and I will explain how this works daily on a subconscious basis like fish and water we do not even know we're embedded in these life fields we flow with the current and we, we float but we don't even know we're doing it because we're so used to being embedded in it we would not know what it's like to be out of it this is the premise and as an extension of this, the interconnect light in the interconnectedness of all things. If, if we truly understand this, we understand there is no separateness. We are all interconnected. And of course, I live in near China, which in Mandarin is Guangzhou. Now, the China, that's, the, that's the Chinese from Middle Kingdom. The, the Chinese truly believe they are at the center of the world. Once we understand the interconnectedness of all things, there will be a sense of separation between people causing wars, genocides, and the horrors we see, and between ourselves and our planet. Um, I have two logos um, here, as you see. The top one is a reflection of my medical practice of Caduceus with angel wings. Because this is one, you know, part of me, a, a one foot firmly planted into the world being a doctor. And the second one being a, a rather pagan symbol, the triquetra. I say pagan, although it was adopted by early Christians. And we'll talk about this later and the meaning of the power of three. So this, this is a really good slide full of words. Um, the rest is, this is an interesting story. I think of my connection to the light because I landed um, in my 20s in Hong Kong. I didn't know anyone. I had no friends there. I wasn't part of some corporate reality. Didn't know it was a hot place. Didn't know this book, China. So should have bought a guidebook. I just went to work in a tuberculosis hospital uh, because a friend said she knew someone there. And I just thought I would. Um, so I ended up working in this hospital. Tuberculosis is an interesting, very old-fashioned disease. Uh, there were about 2,000 people a year got in Hong Kong at this point. And I was looking after Vietnamese boat people. There were a lot of economic and political refugees who flood from Vietnam with tiny crammed boats, a huge danger. One person had tuberculosis, the whole boat would have it. And what's interesting is, um, in retrospect, I look back, and this is such a 19th century disease, um, the heyday of heliotherapy, that's light therapy, not chromotherapy, not phototherapy. Heliotherapy is from the natural light of the sun. Um, so August, August, Dr. August Rolli, the Swiss doctor, was known as the Sun King because he had huge success in treating these tuberculoid patients. There was a 50% mortality rate, 50% death rate of people who got it. With his um, high alpine, high altitude, you know, taking them up the mountains techniques. 
And um, in those days, there were so many types of um, phototherapy invented. But then with the advent of penicillin and antibiotics, completely dropped all the research and interest into this, completely dropped. Um, and, and now, of course, we're becoming more interested in this sort of thing again as we're finding out how light really works, the human body, as I will explain. From DNA basis um, to enzyme basis, and then connecting with the magnetic energy of our planet, which is, of course, a rotating dynamo of 5,000 degrees centigrade. And even with that of the sun and the, the extraterrestrial systems. So this is one thing that I find interesting, that I, I was immersed in this old-fashioned world. Um, and now we find out that the sun actually does kill the bacterium, the, the TB bacterium. Um, and the other thing is, I only discovered a decade later that one of my ancestors had come at the same age as me, exactly the same age, from the same area of Scotland as a single lady to become a missionary in China. I didn't even know about this lady. She was actually very famous. And, um, and I truly believe, and I have this internal notice, that there's a resonance in our DNA that transcends time and space. The actual light of our DNA that, uh, as some of you may know, only in the last decade we've actually proved that so DNA releases photons of light. Photons are the smallest particle of light. And as we know, light is a wave, it's a particle. It's a great multitasker, which probably gives it its very special properties. So we really do stand on the shoulders of our forebears, you know, my ancestors. And um, I can only really think that this is the reason why I decided to go halfway across the world, other than that I found my parents difficult, that is. But so, um, moving on to the actual therapy. Now, I I'm not the first person in the world to talk about therapy interactions. We have um, these fabulous um, types of therapy that talk about the energies that happen between um, therapist and client or two people, or doctor and patient. Um, I've done a bit of somatic experience. Um, the American Peter Levine mm -hmm. invented this therapy for post-traumatic stress. And they talk about regulation of the nervous system, matching the nervous system, matching it. Um, we've got the up-ledger, we were talking about synchronization and craniosacral therapy and melding. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, specialist in death and dying, observed that um, you know, her top doctors who knew everything about the technical process of death and dying were absolute rubbish when talking to the dying patient. In fact, the patient would get more disturbed. Um, but they really benefited when the cleaning lady just sat with them for a few minutes. And, and finally she said, well, why are these patients so happy and so contented? And she asked the cleaning lady what she did. And the lady said, well, actually, I just sat there in peace with the patient. And so Dr. Kugler ross much to the annoyance of the doctors, then got this cleaning lady in a training position to try and teach other people this, <laughs> this technique. <laughs> so, so we have a lot of examples of this. I have done quite a lot of research, um, which isn't so easy with doctors sometimes, interviewing about what happens. You see, in my area, what's important is diagnosis and healing. Very simple. So, how do they know what's going on with the patient? Every doctor will tell you, oh yeah, you, know, you can tell within a few seconds what's wrong with the patient. Um, what the psychological basis is, generally, like they're depressed, they're in grief, they're angry. Um, and that's, you know, that has knock-on effects, of course, onto the physical reality, the physical bodies. And you get these, um, you know, I was reading the patient. I just knew, I had the feeling, something told me the baby was really ill. Or a female doctor in Hong Kong said, I just sort of saw the light above, above this baby, because you know, crying babies are crying babies. They're disturbed, whether the baby digestion or they've, um, you know, they're having, they've got a dreadful thing in their gut wrong with them. So, so what is this knowingness? And it is a form of intuition, of course. Um, but what is it exactly? I'm going to try and get it out of doctors, but it's really hard because they, they will not go further than this. They're actually not interested in committing themselves to something that is basically non verbal communication, a um, very simple thing, and should be of great interest to, to our profession. 
Um, because they don't think it's scientifically based. They say they're not interested in it. But it, So I'm actually going to an NHS conference on Thursday, Friday called The Wounded Healer, and I will attempt to um, give them a little bit of the scientific background about our bodies in terms of light and, and how that works. Um, so this is, you know, it's a practical world that I live in um, most of the time, and I'm not talking in esoteric terms, with the same people. And quite often patients, you know, they, they say, um, well, that's strange, doctor, my throat's got better. Or, wow, after five minutes of talking to them, they stand up and they say their back pain's got better. Any doctor will tell you this. I mean, again, we dismiss this, but it happens every single day of our lives. Um, but patients do get spontaneous healings all the time. And these are the small miracles. I'll talk about a larger one in a minute. It happens all the time that they feel better. And what's interesting too, much more interesting really, is that often they start to feel better the moment they make the appointment. So a day or two in advance. So that this is common stuff. This is common stuff. And let's talk a little bit more about this. And I'm going to tell you because I do this at a practical level about the methodologies and um, what I believe are the there's a science behind it. I'm going to the Wounded Healer Conference in uh, London, and of course the wounds where, is where the light comes in. Now this is classically used with psychologists, but I do wonder if doctors, because we're seeing sick people all the time, somehow get glimpses into this world a little bit more than most. And I love this quote by a uh, physicist at Heisenberg, something has to be added to the laws of physics and chemistry before biological phenomena can be completely understood. Um, isn't it isn't wonderful that recently, you know, last year's Nobel Prize for Physiology and uh, medicine was given for find, you know, research on the circadian rhythm, something as basic as the circadian rhythm in the human body. Light in the human body, so this is what I normally talk about to people like the doctors, but I'm going to just go over it briefly with you. We know that the hands, for instance, emit electrical, magnetic, ultraviolet, ultrasound, gamma waves, you name it, in the electromagnetic spectrum, and they emit it. And more from this area of the hand, as the lovely Qigong um, um, guy said yesterday, than any other area of the body. And when you think about it, we use our hands as sensory, sensory um, feelers and givers of love and attention all the time. It's so natural for us to get a pat on the back and to touch someone to comfort them. We innately know that this area is, is really important for, you know, it's light. And light is the electromagnetic spectrum, um, if you look at it in a simple way. All, all these things are involved in it, except ultrasound, which is more vibration. So, enzyme systems are triggered, triggered by signals of light, also. So enzyme signals make everything work in our body. And um, Nobel Prize winner Abu Shangori made the point that they're, they're sensitive to frequency in an extreme sense, like colors and frequency of light. And they're sensitive to one color over another, one tiny frequency difference by a factor of thousands. We are extremely sensitive to light. In physiology, and experiments have been done for 50 years that like red light will increase your pulse rate and your blood pressure. Blue light will decrease your respiratory rate, decrease your pulse rate. So, even looking at the light is very important to us. We wear the light, we see the light, we wear it, and we eat it. And all the antioxidants in food, you know, the cancer protecting antioxidants in food, like vitamin C, E, selenium, are in the color. The anthocyanins of a red apple or a purple aubergine is actually in the skin. The good bits are in the color. So there's a whole life story in everything we do here, um, but in particular in the body. This is, um, the light we see, the electromagnetic spectrum goes in our eyes and it's not all used in vision. I had to paint this because I couldn't, I couldn't buy this as an image of this picture here, this picture. Um, so um, it actually goes to the pineal gland, it goes to, well, goes to the hypothalamus and it goes to the pineal. 
And this is to make the point that there is nothing in the human body the hypothalamus, pineal, pituitary axis. So these three organs, pineal, hypothalamus, pituitary, all have feedback loops, they all control each other. And um, I mean everything from stress to fertility to growth cycles, thyroid, blood pressure, producing oxytocin, the bonding hormone, comes, comes from um, these glands, these, these master control glands. It, it, it could be more important in the animal kingdom if you think of elephant seals because of the climate that they live in, they have to have their babies just within a few weeks. That's it or the babies are going to die. In the, in the poles, the babies are going to die. So they have to all you know, produce eggs and have the babies at exactly the right time. Horses, and, uh, I used to have horses, they, they, they produce their furry coats of winter before it gets cold. They sense the shortening of the days. So, obviously the pineal is a magnetic gland, magnetoelectric gland, 30% of it at least is magnetic. And um, there's, another, so there's another story here, right, about the hormones and the enzyme. This is a, a small but big picture in the human body. And while I've got this, um, this isn't the picture of the light being in the retina, but I believe that we are, we as humans are transducers of light. And we're so used to um, interfacing, interpreting with light. Uh, just like um, the electricity goes into a loudspeaker, gets converted to sound energy. The electromagnetic energy comes in our eyes, goes to the retina at the back of our eyes, transferred to chemical energy, then transferred again to electrical energy in the optic nerve for our vision. We're just always doing it. We're always working with light on a subconscious basis. These are very sexy words for me, so I put them in a uh, pink. Good old fashioned physics. Um, transformers, inductors, harmonizers, resonators. This is what the body does. This is very local, very local phenomena. And this is what the body does all the time. The body is hardwired to these phenomena. So uh, just to explain um, a little bit more about this, Faraday and Maxwell. So Maxwell actually was born the day Faraday decided, 20th century uh, characters, 1831, the day Faraday discovered that could take two, two wires on either side of a donut shaped coil create the transformer. So mutual inductance is electricity and electromagnetic energy creating forces in a coil that's placed beside it, not connected to it, but placed beside it. So trans transformers and mutual inductance creating one magnetic field, creating electromagnetic force in the next, is what we're very good at, both in the body and interpersonally. Now this is only one of the ways that I propose that these connections and harmonizations work. There are other ways as well, but you know, in, in this day of um, picking a part of the elephant to focus upon, you know, we, we look at the ear and we look at the tail and we think we've got the whole story and everyone's got their own theory. I don't think we will ever get the whole theory, by the way, because this is the great mystery. And, and that's what makes it fun. I think we'll get closer to it, but we'll never get the whole story. I can tell you now, it's not an either or world, it's an everything world. So, normality, of course, is very fashionable and it's very valid and real. But this is also happening all the time and it's really important. So let, let's not forget good old fashioned business by my Scottish colleague, um, James Clark Maxwell, who was a mathematician and a very educated man, and you know, managed to um, make sense of Faraday's discovery by his use of mathematics. And Einstein had a picture of Henry Faraday Maxwell, the American Englishman and Scotsman, on his wall, as he, he even thought so highly of them. Moving on. Um, this is really important, I've shoved a bit much in one slide here. So, it's, and in the realms of energy medicine, okay, there's books written about this. Energy medicine is so studied scientifically, how things work, basically. And um, there are so many trials, so many studies, but um, I love the, the Robert Beck one, where 
the default phase frequency synchronization in the EEG, the brain waves, for healers from all over the world. Now these are shamans to Christian faith healers to Hawaiian hunas, people with totally different worldviews, totally different healing systems, who totally disagree with each other's point of view. Um, these, these healers um, were sometimes thousands of miles apart, but they were asked to focus on each other. Um, and it turned out that their brain frequencies were in identical um, resonance with each other, and this is not, it's not common. I mean, identical. And not only that, they were at the frequency of the Schumann resonance, around 7 hertz, 7.8 hertz, which is one of the, the geomagnetic frequencies of the Earth that I will talk about. Then the other one of interest was the coupling of both EEG, heart waves, and brain waves. Um, EEG, brain and heart, basically by people sitting quietly together and it was enhanced by connecting them with a wire, yes, that would make sense because our bodies are conductive. Um, however, wire was not essential and complete synchronization basically um, of these. So I like these because they're about synchronization, which is what we're talking about here. They're about resonance and synchronization, those two studies. Um, and they have proof in the EEG and ECG. So what is the Schumann resonance? Well, a little bit blurry here, but basically there's 40 million lightning strikes per day in the ionosphere, about 40 miles from the Earth. And this electrifies um, the ionosphere, and some of the machine have come to Earth, uh, but it's 40 million a day, that's a huge amount. It's a huge amount of energy, electromagnetic energy here, and it does create a standing wave, and a standing wave around the Earth. So, we on the Earth are, you know, we were subject to the energy of the standing wave, which is the interference pattern of the energies, the interference pattern, and uh, forms a standing wave. When you, when you get waves rippling together, you get interference patterns. But we're also subject to the direct energy too, so in a way there's two forms of energy. And this does, you know, this does travel around at the speed of light. So, I feel this is highly significant. Uh, I'm not the only one, I didn't invent this idea. But, um, to what we're doing with our connections between each other and our connections to the environment, our harmonization abilities. So there's a definite Schumann resonance around 7.8 Hz because it varies with the weather. This is a terrestrial phenomena with the lightning, also modified by extra terrestrial influences such as solar storms, lightning, thunder, this type of thing. It's of a, a great evolutionary and physiological significance. And it's interesting to note that um, there's a difference according to our placing in the universe as a night and day um, and times of year, how this affects people's psychic activity. Studies have been done on this. Uh, for instance, at night, um, people find we're able to be more clear and get be better, but it don't start to be better at remote viewing, for instance. Solar storms um, affect us to a huge extent. In 1982, the electricity of Quebec was completely knocked out for nine hours by solar storms. So pulses of plasma, um, electromagnetic energy coming from the sun, knocks out our satellites, affects our astronauts. We are hugely affected by our um, movement all fire above us more than we realize. Moving on quickly, because we're talking about the body at the end of the day, about our, back to our, our DNA in our bodies. So DNA, not just a blueprint for our genetics, um, but a storage region for optical information and an organ of communication. An antennae that signals in the body and outside the body, an antenna that receives a little radio tower all of its own. You probably know about Vladimir Popovnik and the quantum, the, the phantom DNA effect, or when he put DNA, the spiral helix of DNA in a flask, a vacuum flask, 
and shone light, laser light, onto it, it's not a surprise that the light would let's almost stick to the helix shape, stick to the spiral shape of the physical DNA. But what's interesting is when the physical DNA is taken out of the glass, the light still stays in its spiral shape. So obviously an energy of that DNA that was interacting with light. Vladimir um, Popanum, uh, uh, this is worked on the Russian Academy of Sciences as well as the European Academy of Sciences, worked with Char Garajane recently, um, and he, uh, Mr. Dr. Garajane found that molecules, he found molecular communication on the basis of the DNA photonic emission, photons being small molecules of light. And not only did he, oh dear, happened again. Not only did he find that, he found that he could affect the aging of embryos and the health of embryos by projecting those DNA at them. And he found that when he had a, a frog embryo and he projected the salamander's DNA light, he could change, he could reprogram the DNA of one animal to another so that that, that uh, frog embryo would not develop into a frog but into a salamander. Because the DNA had light, the light of the DNA, the tonic emissions, was reprogramming. And very recently we had uh, Bekni Zhang and Sue proving that biological tissue does actually fluoresce, another, another property associated. It's always been the wisdom that um, we didn't fluoresce, but um, recently that in fact was, was proven not to be the case, so that, that's, quite, that's quite neat as well. My friend Dr. Chikoba at the University of Kobe um, in Japan does work with water, and of course we know water is roughly seven. You know, like when we're babies, it's eighty, it's ninety percent. When we're children, it's eighty percent of our bodies. At, at sixty, it's sixty percent of our bodies, and when it's less than fifty percent, we're not on this planet. Hydration is important. So those seventy percent of our body, roughly, it's ninety-nine percent of the molecules of our body is vitally important, and it, it, it's a network. It's not an independently existing molecule. And she did very elegant experiments about its absorption of light and best in low amp amplitude, this is UV, ultraviolet energy, light. Um, and, and this is very interesting because the body works on extremely low frequency best. I mean, this is what activates all systems in, in the body and what works in healing, hands on healing, etc. Extremely low frequencies. Actually, increase the water energy and it changed the um, H2 bond in the water molecule, the configuration of the H2 bond, and it actually changed the, the DNA. So um, this is of great interest to homeopaths or, or people who, who work with anything in the body at all um, on an energy-related basis. Yeah, for, um, quantum tunneling photosynthesis is something I just can't resist, resist talking about because that's just, I think it happens all, all over the body. But I don't um, have got the evidence right here to show you. But University of Berkeley, California, um, Dr. Egnall, you know, discovered how plants do such a great job in managing to absorb 95% of energy in one millionth of a billionth of a second. And um, I mean, how, how do they do it? We, we can't do that with our machinery, right? And it's superposition and. Um, is quantum tunneling basically between the chromophores of the, the green bits that absorb the light. So this is of interest to me because I, I always say to um, my audiences, you know, we, we are made of light. Whether we eat animals that eat plants or we're vegetarians, we we're directly, we're directly taking in the light of the sun through photosynthesis in a very basic biological way. We are made of light. Um, and physicists may talk about you know, particles zooming in and out and vibration, and that's also true. But in a basic biological way, we're eating the light. 
the light that the plants grasp from the sun and bring down to us in the form of photosynthesis is, is what we're made of. So back to me in my little office, beavering away, 50% of my life. And this is how I get my experience, all right? This is how I get my experience. And it's, it's not easy to um, put these things in words. They're very right-brained. Right-brained things that I'm having to put into left-brained terms. But it's all going on here. It's magnetic, largely magnetic. I mean, electromagnetic, whatever, but it's largely magnetic. A lot of magnetic phenomena. Inductance, inducting energy, neutral inductance. We've got the non-local phenomena going on for sure. And um, it's all going on. I'm big on holographic theory, but I'll, I'll talk about it in a minute. And I innately, and uh, my, my knowingness is, my felt sense is, there's a lot of holographic resonance goes on. So I'll bring this back again to working with patients because it's really important to doctors that we get to the bottom of the problem really quickly without doing unnecessary tests that cost lots of money. Bottom, important on a personal and an economic level. As an example, of course we still do tests. This is not guesswork, okay? <laughs> this is using our in intuition, our medical intuition, to get to the bottom of the problem very quickly. And how does it work scientifically? All these mechanisms. Um, so, example, well, there's lots. I'm going to give you my patient example of healing now. I, and it is a good one, actually, for various reasons, because I was about 30 in my office, be tired at the end of the week, bit of a, the graveyard shift, and the type of person that really triggers me comes into my office, and, <laughs> and so all, all my defences are up, and he's one of these um, men who thinks he's incredibly scientific and probably thinks I'm some kind of witch sitting in my little office doing my magic, and um, I just get that energy immediately, but he's there because he's desperate, and that's what we have to remember. Um, people are sick. So he tells me his story, and you know, I, I, I release myself from a little fantasy of my rose petal martini at the Mandarin Mobar, which I'm having as I'm talking to him. And, um, and uh, as he tells me his terrible story of having a headache for five years, he says, I can't sleep, I can't really work anymore. I've seen every neurologist, and they've done all these scans in my brain, and no one can find the cause of an acupuncture. And they find me, these people find me. I don't know how people find me. Rock stars find me too, they, they just find me. Um, and in that moment, you know, um, lots of things happen. I, I draw my defensiveness, my heart opened in compassion. Well, sorry, a, a minute later opened in compassion because what he told me was, he said, I said, what was the point of the start? And he knew exactly what really caused it because he said it started after my daughter was killed in a car crash. And he knew, he knew. And um, so, complete opening of, of the heart drop. I was tired. This always happens when I'm tired. So surrender, a very important attribute happens. And I, I just felt like touching him, which I don't always do. It's not necessary. But I just wanted to. And we have an excuse as doctors to touch people. So I said, I'm just going to examine your head. And I put my hand on his head and I'm just you know, for about 30 seconds, any longer seems weird. And um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. And I took my hands off and he said, that was amazing, my, my headache's gone. My headache's gone for the first time in five years. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm really glad. Come back and tell me what comes back. I mean, what do you do? That's it, never saw him again. Um, so that, that's life. <laughs> But, you know, big miracles, small miracles, some people are grateful, some, you know, I'm almost glad. But that one really stood in my mind, because it's a large example of the other side of this, this coin, is the example um, of healing, and spontaneous healing, and what's that all about. This is a good phrase, and I didn't write it, my good friend James Optionum, the energy medicine doctor wrote it. Pure body entrainment of brain waves, the whole body, bioenergetic conditions, 
with the Schumann resonance of the Earth's atmosphere. A lot of this seems to say a lot to me. Maybe not the whole story, maybe it's 80%, but I like it. So, uh, we're bathed in the magnetosphere. Forget about ionosphere now, that's the Schumann resonance. Um, for those of you who get confused as I do. This is the magnetosphere, the magnetic atmosphere of the Earth created by the rotating iron core at the Earth's centre, the dynamo, produces a magnetosphere. It's very important. Without it, our nervous systems fail. Dr. Valerie Hunton at UCLA did an experiment showing that our nervous systems suffer, so they replicate this for astronauts. Again, like fish and water, we do not know what it's like to be out of our magnetic environment. And we don't know we're even interfacing and working with it. Um, so, this is the, the energy of our lovely planet. Um, this is um, a torus shape here, the energy of the, the magnetic energy of the human heart. Torus being donut shape. A very stable, um, if you're electrical engineer, you know, this very stable energetic structure indeed, with energy going out and looping back. And in fact, um, we have energy looping out of the South Pole and then the plants and back in the North Pole right in the same way. So I feel this is, um, this is how we connect. This is how we connect with each other and we know we do. We know we meet people and we feel we like them, we don't like them, or trust them or we don't. We feel things through, through our energy. On the small level, we talked about the DNA and its photonic energy. Light systems running the body, the cell gateways, the enzyme pathways. And then, the larger level, the energies, our body energies, connecting to others around us. And then, that of the planet, <coughs> and there's the the sun and the other energies. These are overlapping ripples of pebbles dropped in a pond. And as I see this in a very simplistic way, when we're with other people, our energies ripple out towards them, theirs towards us. These are these are love fields, we can say this is um, this is science. We, we have a biofield around us, okay, a stable energy structure around us, around six feet around us. Sometimes that expands expansion at the top of a mountain, we feel peaceful, we can expand it. We can feel that relaxation of nature where we can relax and expand ourselves. Our energy is sometimes contracted, you know, by a cash point machine in a big city. And we feel threatened. So it does change shape. It is it is light. It is energy. So we have the overlapping light fields. Um, some things are interesting, light is a wave, and when, I, when one of my waves touches another person's wave, I don't just get information about that one part, I get information about the whole wave. There's a lot of information to be gathered here, right? In the same way that you just feel sometimes that something's not right, or maybe not very safe. A lot of information to be gathered when one has the tools and uses them. And everyone can do this. We hold all the experiences of this type of intuition. And the other thing about this overlapping pattern of light is that it's a standing wave and therefore hologram. So this is very, very significant. Significant because this, this is a hologram. The overlapping patterns of light waves create standing waves, therefore hologram. And I feel this is just another way on my little list, that we interact and connect with the energies around us. And it's a very sweet image to think of a, a baby inside a mother's womb with its, its um, you know, magnetic energy coming from its heart, and that the fetus you know, creates its own magnetic energy in the embryo. And, and then it's imprinting and training with its mother's heart waves. And then its mother is standing on the planet and doing training with the, the core energy um, and, and the magnetic energy of the earth. And then the bigger picture that that's connecting and resonating with that of the sun, that huge magnetic energy above us. And who knows what else? Like Russian dolls, one inside the other. 
lot on this slide to you. I have a lot to say. So, this is something we can all resonate with. We all understand this. It's not too complicated. Uh, and this is the area in my world of diagnosis. How, how I would extract information from the patient. But also, I'd like to think of it in healing as well. But healing, it happens out of time, out of space. It doesn't need to be sequential. You know, we learn the diagnosis, you should give them a treatment, and then we get there. It's not really like that. It can be like that, but it, it doesn't need to be, because it is a quantum phenomenon. Time is fake, time isn't necessary. It can all happen at once. Okay, so moving on, Chinese concept of Wu Wei is actually getting out of the way. It's getting out of the way, and I think things happen, and it might not be me. I still find that a hard one, because we all think we're so clever with our theories, and we love to do them. But the best healers are usually the ones who just don't know anything, right? They have no intellect at all. It's really sad. And they do really well. Um, so getting out of the way, everything happens when you're really tired, you really give up, you're really, you know, like, oh, whatever. And like that, that gentleman who was heavy banished after five years, just as I decided to intuitively do something kind, opening to compassion. This is a whole other story about the heart. The Chinese concept of Wu Wei is a very interesting one. Less is more. Let things happen. Let all these energies happen. And then this is quote from a very famous guy. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am among them, which is attributed to Jesus. And it's just always interested me because my, one of my things is the power of three. So, if you look at my little symbol here, the triquetra, this is the power of three, this ancient symbol of unity and connectedness. In the center of connectedness, the arcs are equal in length and indicate equality. The indivisible lines, the continuity of the lines, is, the continuity of the lines is eternity. The indivisibility in, yeah. So then this is an ancient symbol of connectedness. And uh, you see it in uh, a first century Christian book of Kells, uh, written by Irish monks. You can see this, you see it in Norse gravestones in, in um, Norway. And then down in the south on the walls of Franciscan, uh, Franciscan chapels. Um, this is a very ancient symbol, meaning a lot. And the triquetra is the name, the triquetra. What's this all about? Well, when, when I turn up with my energy as the doctor or the therapist or anyone else actually, things change because in the quantum world, tiny, tiny changes can have large knock-on effects. Things change. And if I have my energy, there's a few things going on here, but if I have my energy, my little pond down here, Patients up here with their energy, we have overlapping ripples. I have a hologram, that's the third thing. Well, we have, we each, each have our energies, and the third thing is the intersection of the energies, right? It's the third entity that's come up here. And this is a possibility for change. This is a possibility, I'm going to have to move on to get to some other, it's a possibility of change and the tools of this, um, how, do, well, how do I do this? This is important, and it's all written down anyway. Um, for your presence and focus, vitally important. Hyper focus, yet distributive consciousness, a diffuse focus. Now, conductors, conductors, you know, of, of orchestras have to focus on I don't know how many, right? How many instruments? Twenty instruments. They have to have every note in their minds all the time. They are taught to put themselves on another plane to do this. It's, it's hyper difficult, right? You're hyper focused, but you have distributive consciousness. And this is moving one's consciousness from limited to infinite possibilities, singularity to plurality. So, what does this mean? Patient comes in with sore shoulder, common thing. And I'm thinking, you know, my left brain is going down, recent sore shoulder, tendinitis, arthritis. Bruise, trauma, cancer, right? It's all, it's all there. And we, 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 we're taught to do this. And focusing on the shoulder. You can do that with your left brain, but your right brain has to be two pointing. 
Now, it's a very simple technique I've been taught. Pick anything you want. Pick the top of the head. The moment I shift my focus from the shoulder, the right shoulder, to the line between the top of the head and, as an example, and the shoulder, there's an infinite number of points in that line right. There's an infinite number of points. So I've just shifted my focus completely from one point to infinity. Very simple tool. I have moved onto a different level already by shifting my focus and just shifting my awareness. And this is really important. We talk about intent and advanced healing. These are the patients who start getting better when they pick up the phone. Um, I'm glad they still come into the office or I would never make any money. Um, so they actually come in to have a confirm that they're actually okay. So I'm quite happy about this. Um, and, and it's very important. You know, I, I, I was saying um, yesterday, I believe people will still get improvement, even if they don't believe in acupuncture, they don't believe in homeopathy. It will still work. But you know what? Um, it won't work nearly as well. So intent is important from the patient. Intent is definitely important from the doctor. Intent is huge. Um, Wu Wei, surrendering. Surrender to this whole body phenomena leading to resonance and wholeness. And we have forgotten this. We have forgotten this um, ancient idea of being whole. Being how important it is to be whole, to be healthy. Um, and being at one with not only each other, but with our planet. An ancient man knew this without you know, our advances in modern medicine and technology. So um, thanks very much. That's, if you have any questions, I'd be delighted to answer them.